Hello, everyone. Dr. Hashem Hasabala here with another episode of the Healthcare Musing Podcast. Um, uh, today, something happened to me that I think many uh, physicians, the ones that I've talked to at least, um, and perhaps nurses or other people in the healthcare field dread hearing when on an airplane. And that is after... Th- they make an announcement. They say, ladies and gentlemen, is there a doctor on board the aircraft? Uh, that happened today on my trip back home from uh, a work um, site visit. Uh, and I raised my hand. There was an elderly gentleman who was pale and diaphoretic and pretty lethargic. Uh, that needed help. And I responded and, and actually an ICU nurse, a cardiac ICU nurse also responded and we tended to him. Um, for a moment there, I thought he was going to go pulseless and we were going to have to, uh, uh, do CPR on the plane. Uh, thank God that didn't happen. It was probably, either hypotension or hypoglycemia. We gave him some juice, some oral glucose. We opened up the kit, the medical kit. Uh, the ICU nurse was fantastic. She was very helpful. Um, I, you know, it's interesting to use the tools that they have. They had this wrist sphygma manometer, which I wasn't sure was accurate and I wasn't sure how to use. And she helped me with that. Uh, she took her his blood sugar cause I don't know how to take blood sugar. It was actually really fortuitous for this gentleman to have the both of us there. Uh, We put him on some oxygen uh, that he didn't need, thank God. Um, And he eventually got better. We did uh, tell them to have paramedics wait for us at the gate so they can just check him out Um, because he had another flight. He was, interesting enough, ironically going to a funeral. (laughs) So um, I'm glad we didn't have to, you know, uh, care for him. Uh, because um, he was uh, near death. I'm so happy that he didn't suffer cardiac arrest. And he, he walked off the plane. He looked pretty frail, um, uh, but he walked off the plane. And, um, you know, of course, the staff was very appreciative of the both of us. Uh, and, you know, it, it, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, several years ago, gosh, almost eight years ago, similar thing happened with a, with a, fl- with a flight attendant. Um, she had, had SVT. And I helped take care of her, and you know, I really, I, I really enjoyed it. I, I think it's, you know, a, a lot of us in healthcare joke about living our dream. You know, if you ask them how you doing, living the dream, and they're clearly being sarcastic. Um, for me, I've always wanted to be a doctor. It was the only thing I've ever dreamed of. It's the only job I've ever wanted, and it was my dream job since I was a kid. And I have, I'm so blessed to be given the opportunity to serve in healthcare, to care for people at their most vulnerable. Um, and, you know, again, great for him that I happen to be a critical care physician, right? So this was right up my alley. There was a, there was a veterinarian on, the, uh, on board and there was a podiatrist on board and uh, nothing wrong with either of those uh, fields. What he needed uh, really required the skills that the ICU nurse and myself had. Um, and it felt really good. It, uh, you know, not, not many, I mean, some people, you know, thanked me and said, thank you so much. The staff was very, uh, you know, appreciative. That was nice. It's nice to be appreciated. And at the same time, uh, you know, at the same time, it's like, it, it just felt good to help somebody, you know, even, even when I'm quote unquote off duty, uh, and I think it's part of being grateful for being given the, the, the gift to answer the calling of healthcare is to help people when, when, when you need it. Um, I even had to write a little mini note in their like middle, little mini record. It was very interesting. So, um, and, and at the end of the day, it felt great. It feels great to help people. Um, even when you really are quote unquote off duty and, and you don't, maybe I wasn't necessarily looking to, to be the doctor on board. 
And I'm glad I was. I really was glad that I was able to help this gentleman. And I'm really happy that he wasn't uh, sicker, that he didn't suffer cardiac arrest. And I actually went through in my head and I asked a flight attendant, well, what would have happened if, if we had to do CPR? And she said, we would have landed the plane. Uh, we, they would have landed the plane in about 20 minutes. So I'm, I'm grateful to, for, to God that, that he didn't suffer cardiac arrest for his sake. And it would have been a big disruption for everyone else. And, and, um, and, and then, you know, the logistics on a plane is much more difficult. I mean, I, I, I was thinking in my head, well, how are we going to do CPR? What are we going to do? And now I'm thinking in my head next time, what do you do if somebody collapses on a plane and you have to do CPR? I think you just got to drag them to the floor and, um, and, you know, do CPR on the floor. We wanted to lay him down. And that, that was really difficult. It's very, it's in coach. So it's a very you know, cramped space. It's really hard for him to move his legs and, and, and the, the, the chairs don't recline not even six inches. Um, so, uh, you know, things to think about next time. And at the same time, I just loved being able to help someone. And, and it, it was just another reminder of how blessed and lucky I am to be in this field, to be given skills that few other people have and the, and, and be given skills that can help people in a tremendous manner. And I was just so blessed to be able to, uh, to contribute and give back to the enormous blessing that I have to be as a, as a, as a physician. Uh, and it was something that I'll remember uh, for quite a long time. Anyway, thanks for your attention. Thanks for listening. Uh, this is Dr. Hashem Hasabala for the Healthcare Musings podcast.